Skrillex would probably never done a song with Bieber a year before, two years before. It's expensive, you know what I mean? It's like the sounds that are used are not cheap. They're very expensive sounding sounds. This, this might sound silly, but we purposely try to almost put bad sounds in it in the beginning to know that we have to make something sound better. Where are you now? Where are you now that I need you? I'm at the party at Fashion Week. Saw Bieber up top, and I'm talking, and I'm like, yo, I got this weird idea. I got this project with Skrillex. We should do a record with uh, Bieber because, for one, no one would expect it. And so he sent us a piano and an acapella for Where Are You Now? So I got it on my email, and I forwarded it to my assistant. I was like, yo, download this. I'll, I'll listen to it when I get home. Me and Pooh Bear actually wrote the song together and just collaborated on melodies, collaborated on, on the words. The song was a really slow ballad. Never had any drums, even. Jason Boyd, Pooh Bear, is probably one of the best writers I've ever been able to work with. Actually, super weird for me at first. I was like, this is wrong, Pooh Bear. He's like, no, this is right. It's just, it's wrong right. I just had to get used to it. So the, the song, the original piano song, if I pull it out, you hear like a dip, because it's like a sort of side chain on it. It goes half time. And the loop is just this one, simple. You kind of hear the beginning of the loop. It's like an end of a drum. It's like a little. I feel like you put that song and most people are gonna feel something from it. Maybe I'm sensitive or something, but it just made, it just did something. Beautiful, I can listen to that. When we listen to a song, what you want is to have an earworm that you can literally listen to for an hour, two hours in a row and not get bored of it. Now being um, 21 and going through some hardships, I think that you can hear that in my vocals. You can hear that through the emotion of my voice. The first thing we made with the song was literally just me playing with the vocals. This thing. The voice and mouth and like the whole like structure, your skull structure is like a synthesizer, like a organic synthesizer. You know, you have your vocal cords which create a vibration and it travels up through the rest of your face and hits the roof of your mouth and bounces off and depending on how you open your mouth and those are just changing and shifting the frequencies. Anybody can copy any synth now. You can find the synth sounds, you can find presets, but if you manipulate vocals, it's something really original. I gave you attention when nobody else was paying. And then we'll go, all right, cut, let's get the next line. We took a lot of his, his vocals and did different things to it, like added. We added like natural harmonies because we didn't have anything from him. We just had a vocal, so we created our own harmonies. Like this is gonna be. Let's go down to seventh, right? And then we have this one. My favorite drum producer is, is Skrillex. People think his sounds are greatest, but he's one of the best drum mixers ever, so. I basically just, um, when I usually do MIDI, I just draw it in, so like. That's how I did it. The drop has an A and B part. The first part's simple. Kind of hip hop bass. Second drop, second half of the first drop goes double time. Right, it's a little more up tempo. If you compare it to Painter, it's like, you know, so much of the process until the 11th hour is literally just getting colors, right? You mix a little this color and that color and like you, you create a new shade and a tone that you maybe haven't seen before. You take this, that sound, right? And they play with that sound for, for like an hour until it's perfect. Probably if he sees his interview, this is the first time he's heard any, anybody's heard any of the other versions. This is a cool version. This is still a work in process. This wasn't the version where we were like, these are, this might be the one, or like that might be the thing. It was like processing stuff and then finding the right sounds and then, and then like minimizing that at the end. It was always the key, it was always the goal, but it was like finding that one little thing, which was the, the dolphin singing, the dolphin sound. Everybody wants to know what the violin flute sound is. And I'll, point, I'll pull it out for you so you know exactly what it is. 
Dun, 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 dun. That's actually my vocal that they took and they messed with it. I'll play it for you totally clean. It's him, just, I cut out this piece. Need you the most. So it's like pitched way up, distorted, bounced, rebounced again, so it sounds worse almost. The thing about Ableton is you can really like almost destroy a sound so many times it, it loses quality, which is a, a cool thing I like. It's like people always trying to like avoid digital distortion, but we always like using it. We're literally always trying to find something that you haven't heard before. You know, you took a little pattern and created it into a whole different sound, but it still has the elements of some human thing, you know, like a, a warmth in the track. I was like, Dippo Skrillex, uh, I don't, really know if that's like where I want to go and they they did it it was like oh my gosh this is blowing my mind I've never been to clubs like a real person you know like a 21 year old person so I saw him that night and he came in and performed the song live the Cascade remix now here we are, dancing. I got everyone jumping, giving me a reaction that I never thought I would get, especially for that, that type of crowd. You've never seen like adult fans screaming for them? Because like a lot of times it's like the 16 year olds and like little kids, but adults kind of disregard them. Because I think last tour was awesome. Like I loved the songs, but there's certain times I was just like going through the motions and I just want to love every part of it. Using his voice and using him in the record was part of the, the magic of the record. Not because it's gonna get us more fans or more notoriety, but, but just a, whether you love him or not, he's a polarizing figure. To me, that's still cool that we're still in an in a, in a era where people think that people have no talent if they make computer music. I think it's awesome. It just shows how young it still is and how relevant it's gonna be for a long time. It's like so rebellious in a lot of ways.